What's going on, guys? Here comes the latest podcast. I'm definitely going to be pushing this. Uh, I love podcasting. I already mentioned that multiple times. And this one is going to be, you know, listen, Gary's already talked about it. And you know what? I actually like that he just, you know, he started changing his tune because about two years ago, he started talking about entrepreneurship is the shit. It's the bomb. You, everyone become an entrepreneur, blah, blah, blah. And then he started changing the tune when he started seeing there's not a lot of good entrepreneurs out there. People will start their own company and Gary's like, ah, you're actually, that's probably not a good idea. Or you're just not someone that's going to execute it well. You know, those are two things. You know, the book Zero to One by Peter Thiel. I think that's how you say his name. I don't think it's Thiel. I think it's Thiel. But he said it. He said, you have an idea. Taking the idea to execution is everything. You know, I, I, I think I mentioned on a previous podcast, my sister has an amazing idea, amazing idea about a travel website. She's very talented. She takes incredible photos, but she hasn't started it. She's been talking about it for over a year. Girl, start that fucking business. Or boy, start that business that you've been thinking about. Because if you don't start it, then just... Don't even think about it because you're killing yourself like mentally. And not only that, you're also going to regret it later on. So number one is just get rid of whatever the idea is in your mind or execute on it. And the second thing is there's two types of people in a business. I've already talked about this. It was from the book. What was the name of the book? Um, I forgot the name of it. Uh, it's going to come to me. Um, whatever. But there's two types of people. There's the visionary and then there's the integrator. So the integrator is essentially the COO, which is chief operating officer. And then the visionary is the CEO. The CEO is the Steve Jobs. The um, COO was Wozniak or the integrator was Wozniak. Um, Bill Gates, you know, Bill Gates and um, what's his name? Uh, Paul Allen. You know, Bill Gates was the CEO. He was the visionary. He was the one that was taking the business to the next level. And then you needed someone to do the day-to-day -day operations. The person that says, okay, thank you, Steve. Thank you, Bill. This is where we're going to go, company. And they're both incredibly necessary. They're, all, they're both very necessary. For myself, I'm a visionary. I'm a CEO. I'm the head of the company. However, I need someone to do the day-to-day -day operations because I don't want to do the day-to-day -day operations. I don't want to be checking in on, did you make your phone calls? How many phone calls did we make? Why are we not getting leads? What kind of leads are we getting? Why are we not following up on the leads? Like, I don't want to do that. That is way too micromanaging for me. I want to ma macro manage, which is, what, how many calls for the month are we making? Not how many calls are we making for the day? That's the COO. So you could be an amazing, you could have an amazing idea, but the problem is you're an integrator or you're a COO. And if you are that, it's really hard to take it from a great concept, an idea, product, service, and grow it globally because there is so much competition. There's so much pushback. There's an incredible video on YouTube of Steve Jobs talking about uh, they not everyone is not only built for an entrepreneur not entrepreneur not everyone should be an entrepreneur because it is so hard it is so challenging you push so hard and then a disruption comes through then the internet comes or then MP3 comes and wipes out CDs or then uh, Pandora Spotify Apple Music Amazon come in and they wipe out MP3s then. Uh, you know, YouTube comes and then that completely wipes out movies or, you know, HBO and Showtime. You know, if you think about it, the amount of disruptions that have happened in the last 20 years has been incredible. Look at music is music industry. Totally different. Uh, travel. You guys probably listening don't remember travel before the Internet, which was you would have to go through a travel agent. You'd actually have to go into an office and say, this is where I want to go, make it happen, or call in and say, this is where I want to go. Like, it was a luxury. It wasn't like, it wasn't like, uh, like a burden. You know, people like, oh, I have to get on a plane and go somewhere. Like, you know, Louis C.K. talked about it. You're literally sitting in a cylinder, a steel cylinder, aluminum or whatever the metal is, flying thousands of feet in the air at hundreds of miles an hour and you are landing in a destination in hours that would take people months and they may die you know years ago and years ago 
we're talking if, if the earth is billions of years old this is only like 200 years maybe 100 years getting out to california was not easy going through the oregon trail over the um the entire west coast mountain ranges and deserts and everything else anyway so going back to it is entrepreneurship is not sexy okay it sounds sexy it looks sexy it's great as gary talks about putting ceo in your in your instagram profile however actually running a company actually dealing with bullshit actually deal bullshit from uh competition or from employees or drama or people have questions or they don't want to do what you're doing or they're not doing it the way you want it to be done or they're doing it the way they want it to be done and they think it's right but you don't think it's right but you want them to think it's right and then you just have all these meetings about it that is not fun okay that is like you literally walk around life as an entrepreneur as like someone that's like really wants to build something big not talking about people that are like okay i own a pizza shop like that's entrepreneurial because you own something and they're probably thinking of like, how do I get things a little bit better? But a lot of people, probably I'd say the majority of the people are like, okay, I'm cool with making $100,000 or $500,000 or whatever it is. I'm thinking for myself, like hundreds of, like I'm thinking long-term, big-term, even as I say that, like I get like this weird cringy feeling in my body and my skin and whatever. I'm thinking that amount of money because when i was younger i never had that concept i never had the concept of like hundreds of millions of dollars or like tens of millions of dollars like i never had that concept in my mind and now even just thinking about it now it's crazy like you have to truly believe not only you're worth it or your company is worth it but that you have the ability to get there so when people start talking about you know i'm not going to say tie again i know i brought him up on the last podcast but Ty Lopez brings up entrepreneurship or ideas or executing or running a business and things like that. But the thing is, the guy hasn't run like a legit large business or a legit medium sized business. Like I would love to know his true past. Like I don't think he's ever talked about his true past, like his past of um, I was here in 2001 then from 2001 to 2003, I was here. From 2003 to 2007, I was running this online or, or this organization. You know, I heard he had a couple of dating websites and they kind of flunked. And now he has this like sick house and this crazy lifestyle, but he's not talking about what he does. He kind of sells the 67 steps. He quote unquote sort of invest in business, but he doesn't really talk about it. You know, that that's the weird thing about Ty is that he has this like ridiculous lifestyle, this insane lifestyle of just like, Flying private, which by the way is like twenty thousand, thirty thousand dollars a trip, and to blow money like that on instead of like first class, which is like what a thousand, five thousand max on like a ridiculous first class, like bro, come on, like you know. So I would love to find out the people that, and, and Jeff Bezos has also talked about this. So. Essentially what I'm getting at is if you are a true entrepreneur, don't look at someone like, you know, the guy from Shreds. You know, I don't know his name, but he went through a massive controversy uh, about, you know, putting out a shitty product, throwing up some fake, fake Instagram posts, you know, like body comparisons and bullshit like that. But you're looking at these things on Instagram and you're like, I want that yacht. I want that plane. I want that private jet. I want that blah, blah, blah. I want something, those shoes, that watch, the money, the car, the house, the whatever, the girl, the guy, the body, whatever. I want that. But the thing is, that's, that's the end result of putting in tens of thousands of hours. For me, it's 10 years and I'm still where I am. 10 years. You know, I just saw uh, in a, a video with Bill Burr very famous comedian if you don't know who he is bill burr very funny highly recommend you look him up and he was just on uh like one of the morning shows out in la and they interviewed him and they said you know can you believe where you are right now he's 48 i think he is 48 years old 1.4 million people listen to his podcast weekly by the way that's insane 1.4 million people per week that's that's a ridiculous amount of people listening in so and bill came back and he said it took me 20 years to get here so i felt like i was walking up a very gradual hill think about that a guy who's 
probably one of the top comedians out there right now. Him, Louis, uh, Jerry. I don't know if Jerry's really doing as many you know talks and whatever. But if you think about it, one of the best comedians globally. By the way, being a comic is so hard. It is probably one of the, that. Uh, comedians probably have the hardest gig. I was going to say acting. But the thing is with acting, you don't even go on screen sometimes because they don't even cast you. But once you get on stage, you're like – it's like performing in a musical or it's like performing on Broadway. Like it's live and you have to make people you don't know laugh. And what Bill was saying, it took me 20 years of pushing as hard as he could. So that means he started probably around 28. Maybe he's doing miscellaneous jobs. It could have been even longer, like 25 years walking up a slow inclining hill, a small hill that was inclining just, just, for myself, I know that if I look back in 10 years from where I am right now, I'm going to be like, I can't believe I got here. You know, like I, I can't believe I got here and it was 10 years. But that's the thing is for me is that people you guys are like coming in really early on on on. And I don't want to say my success, but our success, like honestly, because if it wasn't for you guys, um, a, I wouldn't have an audience. I would still be, you know, producing podcasts because I just have a passion around it. Podcasts or at least. Uh, all this stuff that I learn and I just want to pass on to people, you know, just living a better lifestyle, practically not living a better lifestyle. Here's my ebook. It's like, this is what I'm doing. This is what I'm buying. This is the products I use. Here are the vitamins I have. This is the, this is what time I go to bed, you know, heart rate monitors and, and, uh, you know, heart rate variability and things like that. So for myself in 10 years, people are going to say, I can't, you know, you're only 41. Like, can you believe this? Or in in 20 years someone's gonna say you're only 51 like and i'm i'm thinking like by the way i'm i'm living really long like so when i'm 51 i'm not even halfway done i'm i'm literally gonna be living to at least 150 so i'm gonna be like one third of my way through my life at 50 years old like that's like i can't even fathom that that's like 120 years left in my life so that's how long term I'm thinking. Number one, and and that's why I'm thinking on health and wealth and everything. Like I'm going the distance. Number one, because I know that if I don't keep up my health, which is everything, it's relationships, it's treating your body right, it's exercising, it's meditation, it's eating well, it's the whole gamut. I'm not a hundred percent in all of it. I'm doing the best I can. You know, I'm human. Nothing is perfect. But the thing is, for me, is that, and. I know this has sort of gone off the rails, the um, the podcast, but I think I, I kind of like it that way where I just I just talk about whatever comes to my mind instead of sticking to a certain subject. But this week um, and by the way, sending questions, uh, you could either do that through Instagram, SoundCloud, YouTube, whatever. And then I'll just answer these questions. So, you know, in other words, what I'll do is I'll go through the beginning part of the podcast, which is thoughts, and then I'll go into the questions. And one of the biggest things that um, with entrepreneurialism is if you are thinking that long term and you are not thinking transactional, in other words, I'll, I'll just explain that real quick, is that relational means, and Gary's talked about it and he gets it. Not a lot of people get this. And, and to be honest, this would totally flip your career or your mindset or your business upside down is if you think of the person that you're doing business with right now as a person you're going to be doing business with for life and not just the transaction that's a totally different mindset than i'm just doing this for the money of this pizza that i'm selling you this this haircut that i'm giving you this home i'm selling you in other words that's transactional like i'm just doing it to make the money on this and then i'm going to go next who's the next customer but if someone says i don't like this piece of pizza or i don't like this house or the way you you did the the um you know, the transaction, like you make it right. And I know you, it's easy to say. And one of the biggest people that are actually really pushing into this is Amazon. Amazon has such good customer service. You as a consumer are always right. And that's why you think of them always Apple. You can always return it. They will fix it for up to a year. Um, but that's the thing is that uh, people have talked about Tim Cook. He's the COO right now. 
or actually the CEO, I'm sorry. He was the COO. I think he was the COO when Steve Jobs was around and he, and he worked directly with Steve and they had an amazing relationship, Steve Jobs and um, Tim Cook. But that's the thing is that Tim Cook is very good at, inter he's an integrator. He's a day-to-day -day operations. A visionary was the Steve Jobs. So it's very interesting to see what Apple does because obviously they're putting a lot of R&D into car development, whether they go that route, I don't know. Um, but I think they understand that that's a, that's a really good business opportunity is, um, is that it's gonna be Tesla, Google, and Apple. You know, it's, and to be honest, in the future, we're really not even gonna have cars. We're just gonna have automated, you know, systems that we call an Uber or a Lyft or whatever, and we're just gonna be replacing the drivers. And, and I know, you know, Uber understands that, and that's why they're, they're really pumping, all, excuse me, a lot of technology into it. So, and I'll just, I'll just uh, bring this in because it was on the top of my head that is, if you're thinking of entrepreneurship and you're not thinking long term, I would not get involved. Because I said in the beginning, and I heard it from Steve Jobs, but he, Steve Jobs quantified what I was thinking, which is, it's so hard. You have such lows and you have such highs and there's so many dips and there's so many other things. There's competition, there's markets, there's consumers, there's pricing, there's uh, getting innovating, getting uh, better service, there's sales, there's marketing, there's, there's customer service, there's, there's the website and social media. There's so much that goes into a business that if you are not thinking long-term, I would not get involved because it is, it is not the business that you just dabble in. You'll get wiped out. It's a waste of, you know, I was listening to um, uh, Damon John on uh, Marie, Marie, Marie Forleo, Forleo's podcast or YouTube or whatever. And Damon John brought up something very interesting. You know, Marie asked him, he said, uh, you know, what, what are the, who are the people that you, you root for and who are the people that you don't root for? And he, you know, obviously he brought up the, the typical, you know, I'm rooting for the, you know, the underdog and whatever. But he said something very interesting on the person that he does not root for or he does not invest in are the people that want it for the fame and are still pushing a dream after they've received. This is the important part. After they've received investment from their parents or their friends or their community or someone they know or trust or they 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 zeroed out their 401k and they have a family. And Damon says, those are the people I not only dislike, but I shred on national TV. In other words, he just crushes them verbally. And he says, you need to get the fuck out of entrepreneurship. You've had this for five years. You've drained your 401k. You've put your parents in debt. You've put your, your family at risk. And he says, those are the people that are looking to get their, their face or their name on their product. They're looking for the fame of entrepreneurship. They're not looking for the, the impact that entrepreneurship is going to be having. Listen to that again. They're li they're looking at the fame and not the impact. Which one are you looking at? That's the biggest thing is, listen, I'm not going to sit here like I know everything. And I certainly don't. And I, I do not want to know everything. That That's what makes me strive for more. But I can tell you right now is the people that I've seen enter real estate is because they saw it on the show. They thought it was easy or they thought it was cool or they thought they would get a commission check immediately. And guess what? This business is not for those weak people. The people that are not thinking long-term, the people that are only thinking, I'm gonna get into real estate, I'm gonna try this out, and I'm in it for 50%, and that's it. I'm sorry, 50% of the people are wiped out every single year. Whoever enters it within 50%, those people are out. Yet, there's still 32,000 agents in, that are licensed in New York City, and only 10,000 deals. So that means for every three agents, there's only one deal that happens, okay? That's crazy. Just think about that for one second. All right, so I, I'm just gonna uh, dial in this, 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 maybe this last idea, whatever. But thinking long-term is, and I brought it up on the last podcast, but your passion or whatever you think about or whatever you like to do and I'm not talking about escapism. I'm not, escapism is I like to watch The Bachelorette or I like to go on social media or I like to watch football games or I like to, I'm talking about your true passion. So I'll give you an example. Every single weekend, I look forward to biking with my buddy Jeff. 
okay we bike a minimum of 50 miles and it you know probably around six to seven thousand um, elevation six to seven thousand feet elevation uh, rolling hills we're going in and I've approved immensely biking is not a cheap sport it is very expensive especially if you want to keep with it you have tires and gears and bikes you have gadgets you have watches you have shoes clip-ins you water bottles supplements you have shorts and shirts helmets glasses gloves like there's you could go 50k in cycling and that's probably the top cyclist if you go for someone that's like competitively cycling you're looking at 15 20 000 as a setup cost and that's going like minimum that's like a pretty good bike but if you want to go you listen and i'm not saying don't do it but i'm saying if if you like myself are that intense in something if you buy the best controller the best tv the best video games you're somewhat amicable record yourself playing video games that's what I'm saying is like if you buy the special chair headset, um, you know, pillows, lighting, whatever. I don't know. I haven't played video games in, in a multitude of years, but I just know that the there were more people, I think. Don't quote me on this. I, or maybe I don't know. There were more people watching the last uh, or the world championship gaming something. There was like 50,000 people in this theater and then there's like millions of people watching online and it was like more than a couple of the the other championships like the world series or the hockey you know obviously hockey is like the most i love hockey and that's another expensive sport but if you look at something and there's a trend going towards it which is gaming podcasting you know gary's talked about voice go all in on that my buddy just started podcasting he is amazing at it it's taken him many years to actually pick up the microphone and take action. We've already talked about zero to one is there's a difference between an idea and execution is if you pick up the, the microphone, you start podcasting and here's the kicker, you start actually uh, producing it. Then you say, okay, you know what? Let's roll, let's roll, let's do it. Let's do this for the long term. So entrepreneurialism is not as sexy as you think. Always think long-term. If you think you're going to like dabble, and I'll just leave you with this example. One of my buddies just started a, a business. Uh, he lives in New York City. He's been in real estate for, I don't know, eight or nine years, but he's on the management side. So in other words, he, he manages properties. So if someone's looking to rent or buy, he is the person that manages the rent and the leases and things like that. He doesn't show apartments or anything like that. So him, his brother, and a friend of his, they just started, and they're very smart, and they have a good backing. Um, so there's three of them and they probably put, I don't know, God, in God lay amounts of money. The, no, I, I don't want to say that. The, they'll put in uh, a decent amount of money. And the reason being is I say a decent amount of money because I started BPI with like $5,000, maybe like max $10,000. And for these guys, they're probably going to put in 50, 50, 60,000 of their own money, their own, you know, 31, 32. That doesn't sound like a lot of money, but to be honest, when you are starting a business, you don't have a job and you're burning through cash, you're, and you're putting up 50 K. So in other words, he said something that was very interesting. We went out to dinner and he's going to be starting a real estate company. That's going to be competing with traditional real estate companies. Obviously <laughs> real estate in d uh, disruption is obviously going to happen. Um, it's just a matter of time. I'm in it. I understand it. I'm aware of it. I know how to counteract it. And we're just going to go with it. We're going to adapt with it. Everyone else will get wiped out. And I know that I have to build an audience. This is how I'm going to adapt. I'm going to tell you right now. I know I have to build an audience. I have to be so personable. I have to be so interesting on a daily video show that I do. I have to be so interesting that I build an audience that I don't need. I can actually leverage that audience for to get into owners apartments and say hey listen i run a daily vlog and um it's going to be featured on there and they're gonna be like oh hell yeah and then we're gonna say um by the way look at all the people that saw this once we go to an exclusive we can then go to 15 20 000 people so that's what i'm saying is you have to think long term. You have to be adaptable. But this is what he said in the conversation when we, when we went out to dinner. So he said, so he started in the business. I said, oh, that's awesome. You know, congratulations. When are you launching? And he says this. He says, we're launching it. We're launching next month. We'll see how it goes. 
We're launching next month. We'll see how it goes. What did I just tell you guys? If you are not thinking long-term, don't get involved. Don't get involved. So what they're going to do is they're going to leverage Facebook ads. But the problem is I know them. They know, and listen, God bless their hearts. I'm, I'm not hoping they fail. Like, I don't. Like, I hope I wipe them out. Like, I crush them. But I hope they don't, like, fail and, and then blame something. Like, it was the brokers or it was the buyers, it was the sellers or whatever. Dude, you just didn't execute. You had a wonderful idea. You had a great website. You had a great system in place. You just didn't execute. So what they're going to do is run ads against buyers in New York City and say, hey, listen, we're going to kick back you some money and blah, blah, blah. Whether it's, I think it's legal, you know, there's a bunch of firms that are doing it. But this is what I'm going to say is, number one, um, if you are not, if you have that mentality going into a business, we'll see how this goes. Like at some point, you you have to have that. You have to be somewhat realistic. So in other words, um, when I started BPI, which is my company, my boss Literally, as I was leaving the door, um, and I'm telling a bunch of people, there's probably 15 agents around, and you know, I'm t telling them, hey, listen, I'm, I'm going to be starting my own company, and everyone's like, oh, my God, you're starting your own company? That's crazy. I can't believe that, blah, blah, blah. And then my boss at the time, well, yeah, obviously, he goes, he'll be back in six months. And that doubt is what fuels me. You know, when I left my um, uh, finance job in 2009, my brother – in an email, I said, hey, listen, I'm, I'm leaving my finance job, middle of a recession. No one has jobs. No one's doing anything. He said, who did you talk to before doing this? In other words, I don't trust you're going to be able to make the right decision. When I started my business, my sister for 30 minutes was like, you're not, you weren't good at sales and things like that. I, any doubt is fuel for me. Okay. Most people turn around, they go the other direction. But that was the thing is that you have to have some kind of doubt. You can't be overly confident. Perfect example, Snapchat. That CEO, Travis, uh, I, I think that's his name, total dick. You know, he got super confident. He is going to go down as one of the, that's, that, that company is going to go down as one of the biggest IPO flops in history. Raised ungodly amounts of money, bought two companies worth a few hundred million dollars off the bat, and if he doesn't turn it around because Instagram is literally copying every single Snapchat idea. Um, but that's the thing is that he got overly confident. You have to have some kind of doubt. So when I started my business in 2014, early 2014, I said, okay, I have six months of operating income, uh, uh, actually operating anything. <laughs> like <laughs> I would have to move in with my parents. So I had, only six months of operating anything. And to be honest, it was one of those things that I, I literally um, looked at as I'm going to make this work, but at least I went all in. And now three years later, three and a half years later, I'm still here, you know, and we have an influence, uh, an influx of money. So entrepreneurialism, entrepreneurialism isn't as sexy as what you think. However, you have to have confidence with confidence is probably 80% of it. And 20% is doubt because that doubt is where are my competitors going? Where's the marketplace going? Where's the innovation? Where's the, where's marketing? Where's sales going? And then the other thing is smell out other people's bullshit. There is so much bullshit online. You know, I've already thrown out Ty, you know, I, I just, you know, he has great ideas and, and things like that. But the problem is he's not really truly living an entrepreneurial like I would love to see how much money he saved up and I'm not talking shit on the guy it's just the way he's literally just portraying his lifestyle it's like bro that's not entrepreneurialism yeah maybe at the upper echelons the Jeff Bezos the 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 Warren Buffett's the Bill Gates the Steve Jobs when, when you're worth billions of dollars to be flying around in private jets and have a sick house and a crazy lifestyle and things like that but to do it when you don't have that amount of money, billions of dollars, I, it's just silly and it's just it's like fraudulent to people that really, truly want to be an entrepreneur, but they're getting the wrong idea. I need the latest kicks. I need the latest iPhone. I need the latest whatever. Dude, just set up shop. So have an awesome day. Um, leave your comments as well. Le I'm sorry, leave your questions because next week what I'm going to do is going to be taking um, questions in the next podcast. So have an awesome day. Talk to you guys soon.